1999, when I moved to the United States from Mexico, I didn't know anybody. I was broke. I didn't speak the language. I would cook all day and I would sleep in this bench in Chinatown. Los Angeles is the city of dreams, the city of angels, a city blessed and cursed with a glorious dream to succeed amongst a facade of hopes. The sprawling metropolis is home to the iconic Hollywood sign, the walk of fame shiny brass stars, miles and miles of beach, and of course, luxurious shopping. Like anything, there's always more than meets the eye. On this episode of Living Proof, we shall be visiting with a chef to talk about how he was forsaken by his father he loved for pursuing his dream to become a chef. He abandoned his lavish lifestyle in Mexico to come to America where he was broke, depressed, yet determined not to fail. This is a story of courage, strength, persistence, amidst complete uncertainty. This is Living Proof. The Nixon, it's a nice place. Tell us a little bit about this place. Well, it's a, it's a Mexican steakhouse in the city of Whittier, but I choose to call it the Nixon because uh, the name sounds very steakhouse friendly, you know, very manly, but it's all about like Mexican food, um, showcased in a way that people will not think it's Mexican food. You had the privilege of bringing in Mexico. What did your dad want you to be? My dad clearly didn't want him, me to be a, a chef, that's for sure. Oh, really? Yeah, he wanted me to be something like within the family business, a lawyer, a doctor, uh, something that in Mexico, you, you know, you're proud of saying, my son is a lawyer, my son is an uh, architect, whatever. Uh, but he was never um, keen of me being a, a chef. You come to the States, you've come from this privileged background. Mm -hmm. You've come with nothing, virtually nothing no command really of the English language or the American English language. You don't know anyone, as, you know, no, no chefs. You just come here with a passion for cooking. How was it? It was definitely a wake up call. It was definitely a um, traumatic experience, you know, like, yeah, because when, when you're poor, you learn how to live a life of uh, not having anything. But when you have everything and then one day to another lose everything, you realize you're useless. Um, so definitely it was a, a way for me to mature very, very fast. Um, definitely not speaking the language, it was a, a huge issue. Um, and, and not knowing anybody, you know. Uh, I didn't have uh, someone that I could just look up to or ask for advice or how do I get into this um, culinary uh, career. You would work all the hours the good Lord would give you and then you would, um, you slept on a bench? I realized that there was nothing else besides for me than cooking. So I will spend as much time in kitchens, in restaurants, and I didn't have a car. So at that time, going from the restaurant I was working to my house, it would take me three hours, sometimes four in a bus. But then certain, you know, actually every night after 1 a.m., the bus will stop running. So from 1 a.m. to 7.30 in the morning, I will have to sleep in a bench in downtown, in Chinatown, just to get back to my house, sleep a couple hours, take a shower, and then go back and do it all over again. He was a very expected baby, with a lot of love, because he was the first baby from the part of the family of his father and of us. Everyone loved him a lot, and when he was growing up, he was a little bit of a traveler. He was always very intelligent, he was a good child. And what I'm most proud of, orgullosa de mi hijo es porque él llevó una vida diferente en México y aquí empezó a trabajar y a luchar por lo que él realmente quería y lo ha logrado. Ha estudiado, ha trabajado ha, ten, y tiene una hermosa familia y tengo dos nietas maravillosas. He's so responsible. Uh, he's a family person and he's, he's always worried about our well-being. He always said that we are his priority, and, and he's so passionate about cooking, about food. And of course, I am a food lover, so we really had like a clean there. 
Chef Katsuji was, I believe, 22, 23 years old uh, when I first met him. I'm proud of the man that Katsuji has become today. Just a very caring person, a very giving person, uh, a family man, uh, a hard worker, an immigrant who has basically realized the American dream and has continued to strive for it, uh, but is also not resting on his laurels and isn't the person who, well, I've made it, so my job is done. Uh, exactly the opposite, he's made it and will therefore um, be a proponent of anything moving forward that will help immigrants get into business and realizing the American dream. Who is the real you? Because we see you on TV as this energetic, funny, quick-witted, someone who's very good with the food and the ingredients from your native mm -hmm. land. I think there was one recipe you used 23 ingredients in. <laughs> but who is the real you behind the curtain? Who are you? I think being a comedian type of personality helps me to portray myself more of a secure person. But I think just like most of the chefs, we're, we're people, I am somebody who's insecure, who's uh, always nervous of, I think that my life, it's a very thin line of being successful or lose everything, you know, that's my biggest fear. That's, I'm always concerned about like, am I doing the right calls? Am I doing the right moves for my career life? You know, people depend on me, not just my family, but I have uh, workers, cooks, people that are part of uh, the, the, my daily life that I'm always um, concerned that I have to make the right calls, so I'm always very, yeah, like I said, insecure that I might fail to provide for all these people. That's my biggest fear. We see a lot in the news about Mexico, about a wall. What strengthens your faith in America? Oh man, that's a tough question. You know, just each head's a different personality and a different political or uh, um, view, you know, we're in LA, and if you live in LA and you have something against immigrants, you're in the wrong city. Same if you're in Chicago or New York, you know. Um, something that I have done on my restaurants, it's at the time that when you get your check, it says immigrants cook and serve you today. And it actually went viral a couple of months ago. It was on every single news outlet. Uh, I got a lot of love because of that, but at the same time, I got a lot of like, negative comments because, oh yeah, because people are racist, people are ignorant, people are um, great fans of being xenophobic to everybody else. So you, you have a hashtag, I took a risk. Tell us about it. It all started as a joke. You know, when you're watching these cooking shows and somebody will say, well, I took a risk and I poached an egg. I was like, well, that's not a risk. That's just poaching an egg. And uh, through the whole uh, TV career, you know, we will see who could say I took a risk more often. It was supposed to be fun. But looking back, looking at what I do in my life and every day, it's all calculated risk that I have taken from coming to this country, to choosing this career, to opening my first restaurant, to start doing the TV thing. They're all being risk and I always tell people, sometimes you have to direct, take a risk in order to be successful. I think I have learned more from my mistakes than from my wins. So I have restaurants in LA, Vegas, Chicago, New York, DC. Soon will be Mexico City. This never crossed my mind. Having done many restaurants, it sounded ludicrous many years ago. You know, for me, the, my goal will be to have a, like a 30 seat restaurant and then be cooking there every night and then that just took a life on its own. And uh, you know, it's funny, they, they say, uh, tell me your plans so God can make fun of you. And this is one of those cases that it work out the other way around it. And, and, and in a good way, you know, I'm, I, I consider myself extremely lucky to be in this situation. Katsuji's story is one of overcoming adversity. The lessons he has learned on his journey have given him the strength and the courage to make his life as a chef count. Each obstacle, from sleeping on a bench to moving to the US illegally to pursue his lifelong dream of becoming a chef has made him appreciate his life. It's not how many hurdles you jump, it's how you handle them that directly affect your future. I want to thank Katsuji for sharing his story. 
Until next time, I'm John Ashton. This is Living Proof. <laughs>